Come on, I want the pepperoni, I want the sausage, I want the cheese, I want the sauce. But you can't get any of that good stuff until the dough has been made ready to receive it. And yeah, sometimes God has to allow folk hit the bottom before he can give them the good stuff. Corn in your house is the good stuff. It takes in prisoners who are now ready to receive it. Who are now open their hearts to Christ and want a new way of life. And God is able to take the mess and make the miracle. The Bible is full of failures. I know we talk about the heroes of the faith, but there aren't many that didn't get jacked up along the way. Moses is a murderer. Rahab is a lady of the evening. Paul, the great theologian of the faith, the one who wrote 13 books of the New Testament, the one who God would use to write the theology of the church is a mass murderer. I mean, in our legal system, if justice prevailed, he would have been sentenced to death row for killing people because of what they believed, regardless of his motivation. That's mass murder. Yet in Acts chapter 9, Paul tells Ananias, I want you to go to him. Ananias says, you don't mean him. He killed folk like me. You don't want me to go him. He is the kind of person we avoid. You do not want me to go him to him. He says, oh yes, I do. And the reason I want you to go to him is because I have a plan for him. I have a plan for him. And it's, he says, I've got a big plan for him. And I want you to open up his eyes so that he can see the plan almighty God has for mass murder of Paul. We, don't, we know that he was a mass murderer, but we don't think of him that way. That's because when he met Jesus and got new life, his future was greater than his past. That's what Cornelia House does. It offers a greater future in spite of a raggedy, rickety past. And Paul never lost sight of that past either because even amidst all of his accomplishments, he would say, he, me, the worst of sinners. He never forgot where he came from but he sure was grateful for where he was going to. Many lives that we want to throw away, God wants to do something with. But he says, when you are ready for the plan, you will call upon me, verse 12 and 13 says, and you will seek me and you will find me when you search for me with all of your heart. He says, you're incarcerated right now. You're locked down in Babylon and I still have a plan for you, but in order for you to get to the plan, you have to go through me. In other words, you've got to be connected to me. And the beautiful thing about this program, as opposed to just state-run programs and opposed to programs in general, is it offers the living God and his son, the living Christ, as the centerpiece for seeing that plan work out in their lives through his people. That it is unapologetically Christian, it, it, it unapologetically resonates with the gospel of Jesus Christ and its purpose to disciple those who come through its program so that they become uh, visible, verifiable followers of the Savior, not only in their theory, not only in their theology, but also in their walk and their lifestyles. And so they learn to call upon him and to make him Lord of their lives. At 5.30 this evening, I got a phone call that my seventh grandchild was born. My daughter Priscilla uh, gave birth to her third boy, my seventh grandchild. And some of you know Priscilla through her work with Moody and the Bible studies that she does for women and the like. Well, she's one of three girls in my family who are pregnant. 
her bigger sister is pregnant uh, with her fourth and is due next month. My youngest son's wife, Jonathan, his wife, Kanika, is pregnant and is due in January. Crystal, who's Priscilla's oldest daughter, has a little problem right now because the baby is breached. That is, the head is up, the bottom is down, and so it's not positioned correctly. So labor, if there's not a turn, is going to be a problem because the baby is breached. Its head is not in the right position. So in order for there to be a natural delivery, the doctor says we might have to go in the womb and turn the baby's head down because the way the baby's head is pointed right now, it's not pointed for a delivery. Its head is in the wrong position. Its head must be turned so that a delivery can take place. A lot of the folks who are behind these bars, see their heads are in the wrong position, but the goal of Cornelia House is to turn the head into the right position so God can deliver them and bring them to the new life that God has in store for them. And that's the beauty of this ministry, getting the head right, turning it into the right position. 